So what links this man with him, 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 them, him, them, 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 oh, and of course, him. Of course, the answer is Port Merion, the self-styled Italian village that's in northwest Wales. And we're going to take a look around the village at some of the buildings and some of the things you can see there and also mention a few notable visitors that have been there for various reasons over the years. Port Merion itself was the brainchild of Sir Clough Williams Ellis who between the mid 1920s and the late 1970s actually basically built the estate. There were a few buildings there already including the hotel but Sir Clough restyled them, added to them and even imported bits of other buildings that were to be demolished that he thought were too good to not save and he bought them to Port Merion and repurposed them which at the time was quite an original idea. Now I was lucky enough to be staying in this cottage known as Dorland Gock which is just outside the main village and it's a very nice place to be um, with a great view of the estuary that's nearby and it's in some nice landscaped grounds and so on and it's just off the main driveway and in a second we'll look at the main driveway it's the first point of interest would you believe and the reason it's a point of interest is a music video was made on this driveway back in 1995 which featured the band Supergrass who spent a lot of their time going up and down this driveway either on a brass bed or on the back of a trailer with some bicycles for their song All Right. And of course the video does use a lot of Port Merion, it features all over the place. Now, as we carry on down the driveway and start to move into the main village itself, you'll actually go past the main gate and you'll come to eventually this point. Now on the left hand side here is a building which is a bit of an optical illusion. This building is called Cliff House and the windows you can see on the left are all entirely fake and painted on and it's something you see a lot around Port Merion. And the building in front with the archway that we're going to walk through is called Gate House and this was a favourite haunt of Brian Epstein, the manager of the Beatles. In the 1960s he used to come and stay here a lot, often on the quiet to escape the pressures of managing the band and all the things that came with it. Now he loved Gatehouse and that became his default place of choice to come and stay. One thing he did complain about when he was there was the lack of a sea view and so Port Merion decided to build an extension that faced out to sea and added a dining room later on. Now this actual dining room can be seen to this day and is the white bit of the building on the left here. Now unfortunately Brian Epstein never got to stay and see this when it was completed as he died in 1967. So sadly he never got to see the view from his dining room window that we can see here. As we continue wandering down into the village, you pass through another building, another archway, and this is Bridge House. As you pass through and you get to the other side, you'll actually enter what is known as Battery Square. Now this is where you start to enter the main part of the village itself. And Battery Square has a few more cottages, a couple of shops, and is also another location for yet another music video that was made here back in the 1980s. 
which we'll come to in a moment. But as we pan around here, you'll, you'll start to see that the square itself then opens out into the wider part of the village, which we'll get to later. We'll gradually wander down there in a little while. And the video I mentioned was by the band XTC. And back in 1987, they appeared on the music show The Tube. And they filmed this video for a song called The Meeting Place. Now, just to make sure they got value for money, they also filmed a second video in another part of the village, which we'll briefly mention later on. As well as this music video, I guess this square is sort of famous for the home of a very famous fictional character, which is just in front of us there on the left hand side. Now this of course was the fictional home of the lead character in The Prisoner. Now this was devised by Patrick McGowan and there is now a tribute to him in the form of this bust which is just off the square, just round the corner as you come in, which was added a few years ago. Of course, in many ways, Patrick Bagoon made Port Merion very famous for having the TV series made here, and it attracts a lot of tourists, a lot of visitors who are fans of the series from all over the world. They come here specifically because of the show. So it's lasted well, and it's actually provided a lot of revenue for Port Merion over the years, and there's been a lot of events that have taken place just off the back of that one TV series that's continued to entertain and confuse people ever since. Of course today the building that was the home of number six in the series is now actually home to an official prisoner shop with all sorts of merchandise for sale if you come here to visit. And if you're a fan of the show then it's, it's worth having a look around. Now there is one other imposing building that overlooks Battery Square that featured quite a bit in the series which we'll have a look at in a second. It's actually the, the dome building, which always looked very big and very imposing, and it's where the people in charge who Number 6 was trying to get to were located. And it is just over to the right. And in the TV show, it always looked really big and menacing. And they always used to do these long shots to it. But actually, when you look at it when you're here, it's a bit of an illusion. And when you go up there, even more so. It's not as big as it looks at all. Now we'll pass through the archway just to the right of number six's house and we'll start to descend down even further. We'll branch off to the right onto the main driveway again and we'll continue down. Now as you continue you'll actually start to pass through this lovely greenery here and then you swing a sharp right and then take a left and before you know it, you'll be back on the main driveway. But uh, we'll just stop a moment just to have a look at this scene. And you can see all of the buildings on the high ledge there that sort of overlook the estuary, that sort of also look down on the village itself. Now this is still the main driveway that takes you down eventually to the hotel by the estuary. Now as we carry on down the driveway, it swings round to the left a little. And on your right, up on the hill, you'll see this building known as Unicorn. Now this is a bit of a deception. And it is in fact a single story, two bedroom bungalow. It doesn't look like it, but it is. The facade at the front makes it look a lot grander and a lot bigger than it really is. Now this particular building is a favorite of the musician Jules Holland. And he in fact actually made his house look like this building. He was so taken with it when he came to visit Port Merion and he's been a visitor there many times since. So as we continue down and swing round, we start to head downhill and we'll start to go past a few more of the buildings. And this is the main sort of area where there's some shops and, and things to, to buy and some cafes and so on. Um, there's, there's a place that does street food and there's also an ice cream parlour on the left at the bottom here. And just a bit further down on the right, the main cafe is this building on the far right hand side. And just ahead of that is the main window of the town hall. Uh, just opposite there you've got the curved lines of Angel Cottage, 
which is another self-catering place, which is quite unusual. And as you go past that and past the town hall and carry on downhill, you'll start to see the estuary. And as you look to your left, you'll see a good view across to the mountains. And of course, you can see the Port Merion swimming pool, which is for use by the hotel guests and for the guests in the cottages and all the other accommodation that can be found. I think I got lucky the night I filmed this. It was early evening in August and it was very still as you can see. The water has barely any ripples at all which is quite unusual. Right, just on the right hand side just coming into shot is the entrance to the hotel. Of course this is one of the oldest buildings and was actually here before the village as we know it today was actually built and it was actually gutted by fire in 1981 and then subsequently restored and reopened in 1988. As you go down a little further there is a little footpath down some steps that brings you out to a terrace below the hotel and here is another optical illusion. This is actually a non-existent ship that you see in front of you. It's basically a permanent structure. The actual ship that it's based on is actually out there in the estuary and when the tide goes out sometimes in the right conditions you can sort of see the uh, the outline of the wreck buried in the sand. It was actually owned by Port Merion and uh, broke away in a storm many years ago and ended up being wrecked and has been out there ever since. As you turn back round, you can start to see the other side of the buildings that actually cling to the edge there and overlook the estuary. And as you look the other way, you can start to see the outline of a tower that we'll come to in a moment. Now to carry on, you actually swing to the right, you go through an archway under the hotel and pass through a very low passageway. So if you're anything above about six feet tall, Watch your head when you go through there. It could hurt. Now while we're down here, I'll just mention another visitor or visitors that came to Port Mary back in 1998. An album cover was actually shot on the beach there when the tide was out for the Manic Street Preachers album, This Is My Truth, Tell Me Yours. And I was here that week, staying at Port Mary for the first time, and I missed them. Also in the same week, back in 1998, we had another visitor and I missed them as well because I decided to go out for a day trip and that was actually, well these two, um, Sooty and Matthew Corbett and they actually filmed an episode of the Sooty show in Port Merion with Sooty wearing the prisoner white beaded jacket and I missed that as well. Also I'll mention another music video that was filmed in 1983 by Altered Images for the song See Those Eyes which as you can see is very prisoner themed. I'll put a link in below the video in the description to the actual finished video along with all the others that we've mentioned here today so you can take a look at them in full. As you can see it does use quite a lot of the village. As we carry on wandering down the shoreline and we come to this tower which actually contains something called a camera obscura which is like a telescope using mirrors. There's also, just to the right of it, a statue of Lord Nelson. Not quite sure why it's there, but I'm sure it was collected along the way and it was deemed to be a good thing to have. It's in a convenient spot for the sea, so kind of appropriate. And just behind Nelson on the right is the oldest building in Port Merion, although that part that we're looking at isn't it, that was a later addition. It's actually another self-catering cottage and they added that later. The building is known as White Horses and the main part of the building is just to the right on ground level here and yet again there's more painted false windows at the far end of the building. Now, as we swing around and look the other way and we're starting to look out again across the sea and across to the other shoreline. The footpath continues round and there are extensive footpaths all around Port Merion that run along the shoreline and into the woods all around the village. And that's a whole video on its own. They're, they're quite extensive and you can literally get lost in there for, for hours. 
it's a great place to go and wander around. I'll stop wittering on for a moment and just let you have a look at the view. Now we'll start to wander back up towards the village and as you swing round you can see the tunnel that I mentioned earlier so as I said before if you are tall at all or anything above about six feet then you might want to duck otherwise it could be very painful. You can also start to see the outline of the buildings up on the hill there that overlook the village and also overlook the estuary. Now as we get back into the village I'll just do another shot of the town hall and that's the actual frontage of it and I think part of that was actually reclaimed from another building. I think those windows came from somewhere else but I can't actually find the details of where they came from at this point. And there's Angel Cottage again with its unusual sculpted rounded shape. And here's just another general shot of some of the buildings. We're just on the other side of the shops that we were looking at earlier as we went down towards the hotel. And on the left there, you've got the back of the shops and you've got further holiday apartments above the shops. Now this is a centrepiece in the village itself which overlooks the paddling pool and the main grass area that you come to which you can follow down some steps that lead from here. Now this is another piece of reclaimed building. directly opposite at the other end is this which is another piece of reclaimed building and you've also got the edge of the chessboard there which is a relatively new addition which is something that was featured in the prisoner back in 1966 and was never a permanent feature but they've actually now put in a permanent chessboard and there were some permanent chess pieces there at one point this of course was the venue for another music video by XTC this is the second video they filmed on the same day back in 1987 for a song called The Man Who Sailed Around His Soul. Now just to the left of this is this building which is a reclaimed hotel frontage from Bristol which was rescued by Sir Clough Williams Ellis, taken down piece by piece and re-erected here. Now this features in a 1976 Doctor Who story called The Mask of Mandragora. This was actually filmed all around Port Merion as it was set in ancient Italy, so they made use of the buildings here. And there is one scene where you see the Doctor and his assistant and another character from the story walking through, and then they all swing round to their, their right as if they're walking into an archway, a doorway, or through to somewhere else. But in actual fact, all they're doing is walking straight into a brick wall. So uh, kudos to the actors and the director for actually making it look like they're actually going somewhere meaningful but all they were doing was stopping because if they didn't it could have uh, been very painful for them all. It's a great place to spend a sunny afternoon to get some shade. And one other notable mention I should make is for a statue of Buddha which is in Battery Square just above where we are now. 
Now this actual statue was used in a film in 1958 called The Inn of Sixth Happiness starring Ingrid Bergman. Now this, this is actually made of fiberglass and was left here once the filming was completed as uh, this was actually filmed all over North Wales to replicate the Himalayas. Another quick notable mention is for Noel Coward who actually stayed at Port Merion a few times. He actually wrote one of his plays here called Blythe Spirit and he actually wrote it in Watch House which is one of the service departments that you can actually stay in today and if I just give you a very amateurish arrow pointing to roughly where it is because I couldn't actually get there because it's in a private area we're actually at the end of our little wander around Port Merion for now as we reach the main gate. I'll leave you with a few random shots just generally all around the village and just say thank you for watching and if you could do all the usual things that YouTubers ask you to do to like, comment, subscribe etc then please do so if you can. Thanks again.